What's going on music makers? It's your boy Fly Guy J and I'm back with another video. Now on this week's episode of Wavy Wednesdays, we'll be taking a look at the Waves Sibilance plugin. I'll show you how and why this is my new favorite plugin for DSing vocals. Now before I get into showing you guys how the plugin works, if you're interested in learning more about mixing and mastering, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you can get notifications of future videos. Now without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I pulled up an unreleased song that I produced for a couple artists from the It's Just Music group here in Rochester, New York. So to demonstrate this plugin, I'll be using it on Avenci's unmixed vocals. I'll play the hook back with the plugin bypassed, and then I'll play it back again with the plugin engaged so you can hear what the Sibilance plugin is doing to our vocal take. So this is with the Sibilance plugin bypassed. We bought the stack a million. Stack it up through the ceiling. I'm yelling, run it up, sir, run it up. It's just music you can't fuck with us. We bought the stack a million. I had to bury all my feelings. She see us run it up, to run it up. But she can't pay the price to fuck with us. So you can hear there's a lot of harsh S sounds and a shh sound that I want to get rid of or tone down a little bit by using a deesser plugin. And what I like about this Waves Sibilance deesser plugin is that it's a lot smarter than your average plugin. The Waves Sibilance plugin uses a new technology developed by Waves called Organic Resynthesis, which takes a look at your vocal waveform and breaks it down into basic elements of the human voice. This allows the plugin to decipher between consonants, vowels, and other elements of your vocal so that it can hone in on just the unwanted sounds and frequencies that you want to remove. Let's take a look at the plugin and go over the controls. All right, so this is the graphic user interface for the Wave Sibilance plugin. And the first control we'll talk about is this detection knob over to the left hand side. What the detection knob allows you to do is hone in on the type of sound that you want the Waves plugin to detect. You can move this knob to the left to go toward a narrower detection, which will focus on more of the S sounds. Or you can move this knob towards the right to widen the detection and hone in on more of the SH sounds. When you play back the audio, you'll be able to visually see which parts of the waveform are being detected by the plugin because they will appear in a yellowish greenish color. Let's check it out. We bought the stack a million. Stack it up through the ceilings. I'm yelling, run it up, sir, run it up. It's just music, you can't fuck with us. We bought the stack a million. I had to bury all my feelings. She see us run it up, sir, run it up. Ha, but she can't pay the price to fuck with us. So you can see by the waveform up here, when you see the yellow greenish color, that's showing you which parts of your vocal are being picked up by the Sibilance plugin. And one thing you'll notice is that when I increase this detection knob all the way to the right, we're picking up a lot of the vocal performance. And when it was all the way to the left, we weren't detecting barely anything from our vocal performance. So when you're using this plugin, you want to adjust the detection knob to find a balance between those short S sounds and the longer SH sounds. The next feature we'll look at is the look ahead button. When you have this button enabled, the plugin will be looking ahead at your waveform and using that organic resynthesis to detect where the consonants and vowels are in your vocal performance ahead of time before it hits your deesser plugin. This will allow the plugin to use some improved detection methods and allow you to really hone in on specific sounds and frequencies. One thing to keep in mind is that when you do use this look ahead option, you will be introducing a little bit of latency or delay. So definitely make sure you're only using the look ahead during your mixing process and don't have this option enabled while you're tracking vocals. The next feature we'll talk about is the monitor section. If you hit this monitor button, you'll basically be soloing only what the Sibilance plugin is picking up. When using this plugin, it's best practice to enable this monitor button and then adjust the detection knob until you zone in on the sounds that you want to attenuate. So let's test that out. Stack, 
So you can hear when I had that detection knob turned all the way to the right, we were picking up a lot of the sounds from our vocal performance, and we were even picking up some sounds that we don't want this sibilance plugin to affect. On the other hand, when we had the detection knob turned all the way to the left, we were barely picking up any sounds, and we definitely weren't hitting those S sounds that we wanted to attack. So again, just to recap, enable the monitor button, and then adjust your detection knob until you hone in on the targeted sounds that you want this plugin to attack. All right, next we'll talk about the threshold knob, which is in the middle. And what this threshold setting does is determine when you want the sibilance plugin to start working. When you play back the audio, you'll be able to see the waveform up here and you can adjust your threshold to determine which sounds you want to be detected and not detected by the sibilance plugin. So let's play this back and adjust the threshold. So as you increase the threshold, less of the sound will be impacted. And then as you decrease the threshold, more of your sound will be affected, as you can see by the attenuation here. We'll leave this at negative 18.6 for now, but we'll end up adjusting this to taste once we listen back to the vocal in reference to the rest of the mix. All right, the next control we'll talk about is the range. The range determines the maximum amount of attenuation that you want this sibilance deesser plugin to have on the vocal. The actual attenuation will be seen by a yellow line in this meter here. So again, the range you're setting the maximum amount and the actual amount will be displayed here. As you decrease this range slider, you're increasing the range of the plugin, which is allowing the sibilance plugin to reduce the level of those harsh frequencies even more. Let's play back the vocal again and adjust the range. So if you increase this, you'll see our attenuation meter is moving very little. So we're not taking a lot off of the vocal. As we increase this, you're allowing the plugin to work harder and get rid of more of the sibilant sounds. So we have a, a range set of negative 25. Well, it looks like we're only attenuating maybe negative 12 at the most. If we wanted to attenuate more, we'd have to adjust our threshold. And this will allow the plugin to work harder. So now you can see we're decreasing that even more. So again, to recap, the range is determining the maximum amount of attenuation that you want to have the plugin perform. And the actual attenuation is shown here. And you also get a visual representation up here with this yellow line. Um, when I play back the audio, you'll see the dips, and depending on how far that dip goes down, it's showing you how much attenuation is occurring. Just to exaggerate this, let's tweak these knobs. There we have some heavy, extreme attenuation. Now we have something a little more normal. All right, the last control we'll talk about is this mode knob. And the mode determines the frequency range of the detected sounds that you will be attenuating. If you have this knob set all the way to the left to a wide mode, then you will be affecting the entire frequency range of the detected sounds. If you have the mode set all the way to the right to split mode, then you will only be affecting the frequencies above 4,000 hertz. And what I love about this plugin is that you don't have to decide between just wide or split, but you can determine a point in between the two which sounds good to your ear. For the most part, if you're trying to deal with the sh or ch sounds, then you want to have a wider mode. 
But if you're trying to deal with the quicker S sounds, then you want to be leaning more toward a split mode. Since this vocal has both the sh and the S sounds, I'll probably lean a little bit closer to split mode so that I can attack both of those sounds. Same thing with the detection. We'll lean a little bit toward a wider mode so that we can deal with both the sh sounds and the S sounds. All right, now let's disable the monitor mode, listen back to our audio, and tweak these settings some more. We bought the stack of million. Stack it up through the ceilings. I'm yelling, run it up, said run it up. It's just music, you can't fuck with us. We bought the stack of million. I had to bury all my feelings. She see us run it up, said run it up. But she can't pay the price to fuck with us. All right, that sounds pretty good to me. Now let's take a listen to the hook with the plugin bypassed and then again with the plugin engaged. So this is with the sibilance plugin bypassed. We bought the stack a million. Stack it up through the ceilings. I'm yelling, run it up, said run it up. It's just music, you can't fuck with us. And this is with the plugin engaged. We bought the stack a million. Stack it up through the ceilings. I'm yelling, run it up, said run it up. It's just music, you can't fuck with us. We bought the stack. So as you can hear, when that plugin is engaged, we're knocking down some of those high sharp frequencies from the S sound. And we're also dealing with some of the unwanted frequencies in that shh at the tail end of the hook. So hopefully that gave you guys a better understanding of why this has become one of my favorite de plugins to use in my mixing process. Not only do I love the graphics, which allow you to see when and where the plugin is working, but I love the fact that they allow you to work between a wide and a split mode using this mode knob. I love how easy it is to enable this monitor button and then use the detection knob to really hone in on which sounds that you want to attenuate. The look ahead feature improves that detection and really allows you to use this more as a surgical de -esser. And overall, I love the fact that I can use this plugin to attack those unwanted frequencies, but leave the rest of the vocal untouched. This allows me to fix those unwanted sounds, but keep the main part of my vocal sounding natural. And that's what I really love about this Sibilance de -esser plugin. If you guys are interested in purchasing the Wave Sibilance plugin, I'll leave a link in the description that'll take you to the Waves website where you can go ahead and make that purchase. For those of you who are interested in hearing the full version of this song, I'll make sure I update the description with a link to the song once it's released. In the meantime, you can find the artist's Instagram link in the description in case you want to head over and check out more of their music. If you guys enjoyed the video or if you learned something new, give me a thumbs up. If there's any other Waves plugins you'd like me to review in future videos, Make sure you guys drop a comment and let me know. And again, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and help my channel grow so I can continue to give you guys some dope educational videos. Until next time, keep learning, keep creating, and keep grinding. I'm out. We bought the stack a million. Stack it up through the ceiling. I'm yelling, run it up, said run it up. It's just music you can't fuck with us. We bought the stack a million. I had to bury all my feelings. She see us run it up to run it up.